Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie, and welcome back to my YouTube channel for session three of carving a pair of buffalo heads. In the previous session, we got the drake's head shaped up, and in the first session, we get done the hen's head and cut out the bodies. In this session, I want to work on both heads and detail the bills, get the eyes installed. A lot of times, I do like to finish the heads. Uh, because the head is where the life of the bird is to me where life is projected and I really like to get a feel for how the bird is coming out just getting the head and the eyes installed and then that gets me motivated to do the body work no pun intended so let's get going before I spend time detailing the bill I wanted to put one little more detail in here and that is a little bit of a a recessed area behind the eye here on the hen on both sides and I think it'll just cast a soft shadow and add just a little bit more character to the hen's head so we'll get that done first and that'll be a quick job so I'm going to use this bullet shaped ruby bit and just uh, similar to the way we form the cheeks just start by putting a groove in there where I want the uh, that subtle shadow and then working both ways to soften everything. We don't want a trench there. We don't want a big crease that uh, casts a harsh shadow, but just a little bit of structure to that grouping of feathers on the head, I think just uh, gives it a little more life. So I'll speed this up and we can watch this as uh, it develops. I'm just blending that into the back of the head there and softening the line again. Same thing on this side. Start with a, a trench and then work in both directions to really eliminate that. And when we do the eye set, we'll kind of tie into that uh, nice soft curve behind the eye. Now I'm going to switch to some sanding and the sanding drum, 150 grit. Just use that to further blend that area out and soften things. And then we'll do some hand sanding to finish it up there. Just making sure everything's smooth in both directions. There you can see a little bit of a shadow there from overhead light. Okay, if you watch my other videos, you know this process is gonna be very familiar and similar. Just get a center line on the bill, mark out, look at your reference, mark out the size of the nail and these two little returns on either side of the bill penciled in a guideline there and we're going to start uh, the carving process by taking out a little wood in this area and and leaving a little bit of a ridge on this lower edge of the upper mandible so that we can add a, another detail line there so I've got that laid out on both birds I'm not worried about the nostrils right now or those enclosures and uh, we'll use our detailed ruby bits to begin shaping these up and detailing the bills. I'm gonna run through this at pretty quick speed. This is that uh, pyramid shaped ruby bit. And I'm using that to start to remove material and leave that little edge on the edge of the upper mandible. We'll soften that with sandpaper and again, this is kind of a repeat of previous carving projects, so I won't spend too much time explaining what's happening here. You can refer back to the Mallard videos or, or any of the other carving videos if you need to see more detail. Now I'm just rounding things in general. I'm going to shift to the small cylinder. That's just over a millimeter maybe. It's very small. I'll use that to 
begin to define the nail and also the two structures on either side of the nail. And then I'm gonna go back and forth and remove material from the upper part of the bill there and from the lower section of that to round things towards that groove. Taking a little material off around the nail so the nail is actually raised a little from the bill itself. And then I'll, I'll work on this in, for quite a while, so I won't make you watch all that video, but just know that uh, this is kind of a time-consuming process and you've just got to go back and forth, soften and shape things, take your time. These bills are very small on the buffle head, so there's not a lot to work with. I do use a pencil like this because it helps identify where there are still rough spots and you can go back and clean things up. The pencil just highlights rough places or ridges and uh, I'll, I'll do that several times. It's just something I started doing and I find it helpful. And then a little light sanding. Then we'll take a look at where we are here. Now I'm gonna fold up a piece of sandpaper. This is probably 150 grit and uh, use that hard corner to really get into those groove areas and start to smooth things out further. You may have a better tool for this. I just got used to using a piece of folded sandpaper and it works well. So I've stuck with it. So I'm just generally sanding things, rounding and smoothing in preparation for the next steps. Now I'm gonna use that small cylinder and kind of further define the edge of the bill where it meets the face and clean things up there. And then go back to the sandpaper and this is a little lighter gauge, finer sandpaper now and trying to get a, a nice smooth finish on what we've uh, carved so far. Same thing here, folded up a piece of sandpaper and it really lets you get into grooves and nooks and crannies. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and mark out where I want this groove along the lower edge of the upper mandible and take my knife. If you've watched my other videos before you've seen this process, this is not a deep knife cut. This is just a light score. And it gives the cylinder a little guide that helps you stay on line as you deepen this groove. So you can see that it doesn't take much. Just like that. Now using a, I think probably 320 grit, I've just got a folded edge here again and going in that groove and rounding in both directions, down and then rounding from the other direction up. So we don't have a harsh edge there. We've got a nice soft structure there, like a real bill. Now I'm just going to do some general light sanding after I get these grooves taken care of and just clean everything up with this uh, 320 grit sandpaper. I'm catching the lower mandible there too. And just eliminating all uh, tooling marks or scratches. You want this build nice and smooth to give you a nice smooth paint job when you're done. Let's give you a quick look at this overall after sanding. Now we can work on the nostril area. All right, now we want, we kind of got the carving, the rough carving done and some sanding and now we want to position the nostril enclosures. So I'm going from this corner point 
on the bill to the upper part of that enclosure and I transfer that dimension to the wood with just a light pin prick. The center line has faded here, so I'm gonna pencil that back in so we can keep these nostrils symmetrical around the center line. And then the enclosure itself is that big. So again, I'm putting a couple small dots there and now I can begin to sketch where these are gonna be located. This bill is very small, so it just takes some tedious work to get the details added. I'm gonna use this small cylinder again. This is a, a ruby or a diamond bit, and uh, use that to begin the shape the nostril enclosures. I've penciled those in and now I'm just going to create a groove following my guidelines. And that gives us the basic shape of the enclosure for the nostrils and then I'll begin to remove material so that we leave those raised. Now I'm going to speed this up so that we can kind of go through this quickly. Once I get those grooves made, then I'm just going back and forth and removing material. And now I'm gonna switch to a little flame shape ruby bit. And that allows you to get in and around those grooves and remove material. With that nice pointed tip, you can really work some fine detail in there. So I'm gonna round those enclosures And this is just tedious work. It takes time to blend everything back in once you've cut in the nostril enclosures. And again, I like to use a pencil every once in a while and check symmetry, see how things are looking. And that looks pretty good. Pencil is your friend, or it's my friend anyway. I use it a lot. I'm just using that little ruby flame bit to go back and forth. And I'm gonna undercut the nostril enclosure a little more on the lower side and then round those a little bit with the sandpaper. Doesn't take a lot to finish sand these once you get them shaped up. Once those are shaped, then I'm used, I've used my reference materials and I've got the nostrils penciled in and then I'm using this very small ruby ball that's just about the size of a nostril to go in and very carefully open those up a little bit and create the, the nostril openings within those enclosures. Very meticulous work, and you just have to be careful you don't slip and grind away all the work you've just put into the enclosures themselves. And then I like to pencil in the nostril holes. Once I get the, uh, the holes formed, and that lets you take a look again at symmetry, gives you a little better view of the nostrils and how they're going to project. And just make sure they're shaped properly. And that's, that's looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to use my embossing tool. And just, this bill is so small. I'm not going to put a lot of wrinkles and things in the bill. Just a few. Add some life. I'm just pr 
pressing into the wood and being careful. And then I'm going to put a couple coming off the front of the nostril enclosure here. Maybe just a few up around the nail coming out in this direction. And I'll work those to make sure they're deep enough that they'll transfer through the paint and that they're soft, nice and soft. And you do that by going back over them and making sure you knock down any hard edges and making sure there's enough depth there for the paint to pick up. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the Drake's bill, very similar geometry, so I won't duplicate that in video. Just use that same process to do the Drake's bill. And then we'll come back and look at the eyes. All right, I got the Drake's bill shaped up and detailed like the hens. And now I'm gonna work on the Drake and we'll install eyes in the Drake, same process in the hen. So we'll show by example with the Drake, I'm getting a dimension from the uh, end of the bill there to the front of the eye. Transfer that over both sides. Then I'm gonna use my hole template and for a 10 millimeter eye, make my whole patterns on both sides. Take a look from the front and see if they look symmetrical up and down so we don't have a crooked eye. This one may be a little bit low so I'm gonna make an, a kind of a adjustment on the fly. You can see um, the drilled hole as a guideline from the original pattern that was the center of the eye. But once you get things shaped up, that can shift around a little bit. So I like to go back to the pattern and just uh, do a final dimensional check because that position from the eye is so critical to the look of the bird. So many people get that too crowded or way back in the head and it just makes, it loses the look of the bird you're trying to portray. So that is a critical dimension. And I don't get it right all the time either. But um, through experience, when I'm done, I know if it's right or not. So I'm just using my little gouge to go around the hole I think someone had asked me um, what size this gouge is. I just thought of that right now. So let me get a quick uh, dimension. It's about seven millimeters, uh, about a quarter of an inch. All right, I'm gonna use acetone and plastic wood on this eye set and I'm wetting the eye socket with acetone and the area around it. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen this before. Um, but if you haven't, and if you're making a buffle head, I thought I would just include it along with the series so that you don't have to go back and forth to, and search and find other videos. So now I am crowding the front of the eye socket because that's where I did my dimensional check. And we want a little forward and down cant to the eye. I'm going to use my fingers today, so pardon me. 
Now I'm just using a, a nice old brush that's splayed out and that's good for this purpose. And then I'll switch to some other brushes, more detailed brushes, to open the eye back up. And then go back to the smoothing brush. Kind of work that smooth again. So I'll go back and forth in this process to get a nice shape to the eye. Plus, we don't want to block this eye channel, so I want to make sure there's not material there blocking it. I'm going to do a quick dimensional check, and that looks good. And I think that eye is about where I want it, so I'll continue to work at softening the blend around the eye. I've got a little of the eye socket showing there, so I just needed to add some additional uh, plastic wood on top. We don't want any indication of the eye socket once we're done with this process. Remember how I said I know if it's right or not? Well, I don't think that's right. I don't know if you can see it, but the pupil is a little far back in the eye, the way I set it. So rather than accept that, you do the painful thing and take the eye out while everything is still wet and do it over again. It's very frustrating, but you'll thank yourself later if we just start over, get a, a new set until it looks right, because the eyes and the way they project are so critical to the life of the decoy. So I'll do that again and I'll come back when I'm happier. You probably can't see it in the video, but uh, that eye is in the right position now the with the pupil in the center i've got that eye installed a little glazed over but we'll fix that up i'm looking for symmetry from the front it looks great so now i'll move to the hen i'm two for two on wrong eye placement today so i got the hen's eye installed and did my check it was too far back away from the bill so i dug it out and put it back in, and I'm much happier with that position. I think just showing my mistakes helps everybody realize we all make mistakes, and it's worth the effort to correct them as you go. All right, it's been kind of a hot day in the workshop. It's time for a cold beverage. We'll call this the end of uh, this session. So we've got the heads finished. We'll let them set overnight and then do some light sanding on those tomorrow. And in the next session, we'll start shaping up the bodies. We'll probably get the bodies rough shape in the next session and then work on some details following that. Hey, uh, thanks for tuning in and I look forward to the next session with you. This is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to all of you.